and you know better than I do, Billy. It's all about teamwork, and and that's what basically imploded with the Leafs and the firing of Randy Carlyle. And I, you know, I picked him to get fired just before Christmas. I said he wouldn't make it before uh, to Christmas, but I was wrong. He made it to Christmas and New Year's, and and then he got hammered right after. Um, and uh, and then when Phil comes, we're going to play uh, Noonan's uh, Noonan's uh, exit speech for uh, Randy Carlyle. Uh, but you know. Uh, the, the Leaf uh, fans uh, have been in bed, uh, depressed uh, through that road trip. They've been eating a tub of ice cream, and I'll tell you the flavor. Rocky Road Trip ice cream. That's what they ate while they watched those games where they got taken apart and, and the shit kicked out of them. And, and just, just for the record, guys, uh, I was in the studio sitting beside Perry Lefko, and Perry Lefko, uh, Billy Waters, and Phyllis Basito picked the Leafs to lose uh, as they were playing that night. And I picked them to get a shutout. And I also told the said the score. It's there. It's documented. And I was uh, bang on for nothing. I will give you credit. For, for nothing. I will back you up 100%. Three of us said no way. You went with the Leafs. What was the score? Four to one that game or something like that? Oh, no, no. You were it was fairly, a shutout. Was it a shutout? Okay. You were, you were, you know what? I picked a shutout and I said they all will get a shutout. And I picked four nothing. I think they won five nothing. So what happened afterwards? What happened is they stopped playing for their coach. Yeah, I don't. You know, I, don't coach, I, I don't think coach. they're good enough to play for anybody. I think they're a bunch of dogs. And, I just, I'm, you, know what, you know, Billy, I have a lot of respect for you. I, you could be possibly correct, but I just think that whether there's dogs, whether there's fleas, or, or whether it, it gets to a point where. The coach's message doesn't get through the players anymore, and they just stop playing. You know that, Billy. Yeah, no, no, I understand that, Frank, but I also this understand guy that, fired on a that if, Frank, if, Frank, if Frank D'Angelo is the leader on my team, and he acts like an asshole, my team's got nothing going for it. Either I get rid of Frank, or I should get out of the, get out of the business. And the same is the Maple Leafs. When you have to look up at Phil Kessel and Dion Phaneuf, you should get out of the business, but you can't. Well, I'm just telling you, I'm just out of the business. that right now, uh, and, and I think that uh, Carl, Carlin uh, Bartley uh, uh, said something on Twitter uh, that uh, getting rid of, uh, I'm going to quote him, getting rid of uh, Randy Carlisle is uh, just uh, like a bad paint job, but it doesn't fix the situation, right? Yeah. And, and, and that could be, he could be correct, but I'm going to tell well, you, know here's my prediction. With I don't, Carlisle gone, hey Bill, let him I'm going go. to see a 3-4-5 game, I don't know how long it'll last, where the, the team is going to play uh, a, a better, and uh, they're going to react better. Uh, you know, Carlisle was a guy who did not mince words. He was not a, a motivational speaker. I, you know what I mean? Listen, I agree with what you're saying about Phaneuf. I don't agree with Kessel. I think Kessel's a good player. Um I think he's a great player. I just, I just don't get him, and we'll see what happens in the in the next few games. But here, here's my point. I, I, I was I was told on the weekend by a very reliable source. I'll tell you the story, and then you can draw your conclusion about whether you'd want this guy on your team. Very simply put, Carlisle and the coaching staff called Kessel in about a month ago, and said, "Look, Phil." With Tyler Bozak as a right-hand shot, we'd like you to go to the left wing because Bozak's always passing from his right-hand position to the left wing. We think you'd get more chances. I think with your strength at cutting in on the off wing, you'd be much more effective. Would you consider going to the left wing? No. I'm a right winger. Two weeks go by, and the president of the team comes down to talk to the coaching staff. Now, guys, I don't interfere, but, you know, I played all of my career – as a right-hand shot, and the most success I ever had was when I was on the left wing. Have you ever considered moving Kessel to the left wing? Carlisle said, Brendan, did it two weeks ago? He told us, no. Why don't you try? The president tried, no. So now you've got a guy who's been asked by the coach and his staff, by the president, to do what was in the best interest of the team, and he flatly said, no. Now let's rewind the clock to training camp. Phil, when we come out of our zone on the power play, you're on the right wing. We want you to move 
across to the left wing because they've got guys that are covering you man on man. That will disrupt their penalty killing, something unbelievable. Would you do that? No. Now, Frank, you tell me. Listen, would like to play with that player. If, he's, if, he, if this is true, and I believe anything that comes out of you is true, uh, then he is not a, he's a heartless uh, human being, and he doesn't deserve to be in the NHL. Because when you make it to the NHL, your number one priority should be to play the best you possibly can and be a great team player. Yep. Oh, and, and you know what, Frank? I can only tell I'm, you. I'm, I'm, you know, I think Kessel's got an incredible amount of talent. And if, if this is true, that this is in his character, this is in his soul, then he's not a good guy. And he's a heartless guy. Well, I, I, and you're not telling me anything that I don't know, and when I say that, I say that respectfully. I think that he's the most talented player on the team. I, I, you know what? I'm, I'm a hockey guy. Born and raised on the ice. Played a lot of hockey. Played from the age of six, seven. I still play. Love it. Love it. I dread the day when I can't play anymore, and I think he's a brilliant hockey player. Uh, and I don't know that side of him, and if that side of him exists, shame on him. He's lucky enough to have Actually, made eight million a copy. the greatest league in the world, and fuck, he's getting paid to play. Yep. What a dream. You're getting paid to play a game. You That's a hell of a fucking dream, eh, Billy? Yeah. Oh, it's our dream. His, he doesn't dream. He's, he, but the fact remains that if he does that and doesn't have enough respect for his, uh, his boss, who writes a big check, there should be a way of disposing of him. Be well, they'll get rid of him because Shanahan's not a he, Shanahan's not a civ. Shanahan's not a moron, and I think Shanahan, if, if that's true, something happens. Uh, I I told you guys a long time ago that I told you in September when we started talking about hockey. I told you that Randy Carlisle's days were numbered. I think that the. the for me, the teetering point of uh, uh, Carlisle's reign as uh, being in the toughest market known to mankind, being in Toronto, was when he needed to rely on Reimer. Needed to rely on Reimer. The team needed to rely on Reimer. The fans needed to rely on Reimer, and he dissed them. Yeah, that wasn't smart. And, and the other thing I think... I think that that was the shittiest thing you can do. Uh, I, I, and I don't think he ever recovered. And uh, I don't think that the team ever recovered because the team loves Reimer. Whether Reimer's a great goalie or not, that's my, my opinion is that he's a very good goalie, and I'm very proud of him, and he's, doing, he's playing very well. And I think that the, 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 the Leafs basically left them high and dry the other night. Well, oh, he, they do. He's obviously one of those players. You're <laughs> going to take a look at Reimer. You're going to look at, at probably... Um, Jake Gardner, there's going to be some guys, Frank, you mentioned four or five games you're going to see immediate change, and you will, because some of these guys will feel like the ogre's gone and they can just play hockey. I, I think that Shanahan's a, 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 a fan. Uh, a, a, he loves the fans. I, I don't think Shanahan's a, a typical uh, Maple Leaf sports suit. I think he's, first of all, he's a, he's a fucking hockey player. He's, one, he's a great hockey player. He's a great hockey player in St. Louis. He's a great hockey player in Detroit. I think he's a great, he's, so he knows the game. He's the real deal. I think that Shanahan is not going to allow, and that's why he made, the, he, you know, he told Monis, no, this, he's done, and they fired him. The fact is, though, that Nonis is still there. A lot of their problems right now are tied to decisions that he made that I don't know how they're going to get out of it. It doesn't matter. It he's, does matter because these are contracts that are. He's, 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 uh, he's a lame duck uh, a GM. And he's, he's uh, right now hanging on by the hair of his chinny chin chin. He's the next guy out. Of course he's the next guy out, but the contracts, they're still there. These are long-term uh, contracts, contracts that he means. made. That's what a contract means. I'm telling you, he's the next guy. Remember this conversation, just like I've told you many times, remember all, all the conversations. He, he, he read a eulogy today for Randy Carlisle. He should have saved himself some time and wrote a eulogy for himself, too, because he's gone next.